Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine. I will list all my socials down below. Now today we are doing another cooking video. Highly requested. Of course, you guys know that all of my cooking videos are very, I want to call them user friendly. So if you're not really a good cook or your first time cooking, you should be able to get through this recipe with no problem. Today we will be making ajro con andule. So for the non-hispanics it is yellow kind of like yellow rice with green pigeon peas this is like a staple in the puerto rican household i know many of you who have tried ajro con andule it's kind of like a love or hate thing because a lot of people tend to think that it's dry it's bland so today i'm gonna be helping you guys make ajro con andule very flavorful not dry at all so yeah we're gonna get right along with it of course, I will list everything you guys need down below. But just for reference, of course, you're going to need a rice pot. These are my favorite. This is like a staple in everyone's Hispanic household. They actually sell these in Walmart and in Target. I just feel like Walmart has a better deal for them because I think they come in like a three pack in Walmart with different sizes. So yeah, this is what they look like. The brand is Amusa, I-M-U-S-A. I love this for making rice. I know a lot of you have issues with making yellow rice in particular. I did, if you guys did not see it, I do have a video of making yellow rice in a rice cooker for my people who are not comfortable with making yellow rice yet. But today it's gonna be very simple. It's gonna be on the stove and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do it. So yeah, we need a rice pot. We also need rice. I prefer to use Goya canela long grain rice. That is my all time favorite. That is really the only one that I use. So along with the rice and the pot, we're going to need one packet of the Sazon Goya. This is the Conculanto y Achote. This, um, just one packet. Now this, keep in mind, is going to be, I'm gonna make two cups of rice. So if you plan on making more, then of course, measure your stuff accordingly. So this is for two cups of rice. So one packet of these. You're also gonna need one packet of this sazon. This is the sazon Goya con acefran. I like this one because it adds color to the rice. I hate to see bland looking yellow rice. It just annoys me and it just makes me think that it doesn't taste good. So I use this for coloring, adding color to the rice. So one packet of these. Now these are chicken flavored cubes. You can use this brand. This is the Badia brand. If not, you can go and grab, this is the Goya, like the little packets. So this is the Goya um, chicken flavored bouillon. So one packet of this or one cube of this, either or. You're going to need a packet. And by packet, I mean literally just one little envelope of these. So um, you're gonna need a packet of Goya jamón de cocinal, so one of these. You're gonna, of course, need goya adobo. I like the red top because it has peppers in it. You're going to need garlic powder. I prefer this one by McCormick. You're going to need salt. You're going to need, this is the goya sazonador total, which is the perfect seasoning. So this basically has, if you guys can see up close, it has the garlic in it, salt, onion, the two types of onions, and cilantro mixed in it. So I like this because it has like all the seasonings in it pretty much all together. So I do use a little bit of this. Of course, you're going to need your green pigeon peas. I prefer these because it's easy and they taste good. So these are the Goya ones. Now I am going to make this, of course you can make your own sofrito, but of course, like I said in the beginning of this video, it's going to be very user friendly. So for the people that don't wanna make their own sofrito and recaito, you can use these. I prefer the Goya brand. So the Goya recaito, which is the green one, and the Goya sofrito. I love these and I have no problem cooking with these. It's easy for when I don't wanna make sofrito. And yeah, I never had a problem with them. So these, and you're going to need some Spanish olives. I preferably like them without the pit just so that way you can eat it and not have to bite into a pit, but it's up to you if you don't like olives and don't put it in, but this I do use. I also use, this is a ham steak. We call it jamón de cocinal. 
So this is what it looks like. I use this brand only. I usually get this in the commissary, but I'm sure your local supermarket has it. So it's basically ham steak. And when I'm doing arrocondole, I am not using this whole thing unless I'm making like a totally big pot. I am just doing two cups today, so I would use about a fourth of this. So what you're gonna do is you could use a fourth of this and cut it into tiny little pieces. So yeah, so we're gonna get along with the video. I'm going to show you guys up close and yeah, we're gonna get along with it. Okay, so before transferring my camera over to this side, I realized that I didn't tell you guys that you do need oil, obviously. So you need cooking oil. I prefer to use canola oil. You can use corn oil as well, but this is just my preference. So yeah. Now my rice, I have it in this container here. It is perfect for if you're a house that is constantly making rice. This is so amazing. I got this from Amazon. I will try to look for the name of it and list it down below. But it basically measures your rice, which is really cool. So you can just press down this button and in this container here, it'll give you a cup of rice, which is really awesome. But I'm gonna show you guys, like I said, because this is user friendly, I'm gonna show you guys exactly with one of these little cups. So you're getting your measuring cup. I am going to use the one cup measuring cup and obviously I'm filling it to the top and I have my rice pot here and I'm doing two cups of rice. So this is one and we have two. Now, the secret of not having sticky rice or soggy rice, like a lot of people like to call it, is to wash your rice thoroughly. I just feel like the more that you wash it, the more fluffier your rice will be. So I wash my rice three times. And by washing, I mean obviously just rinsing it. You're not putting soap in it or anything. You're just rinsing your rice. So literally, I just run it under water. And I like to move it around in the pot. Usually like if you see little black little grains or if you see anything that sticks up on the top, you can just remove it. Now once I've rinsed it, of course, you're taking out the water. And I do this three times. The reasoning for this is because it takes out all the starch so since you're gonna be putting so much ingredients in, and if you have the starch with it too, I feel like that's where a lot of people go wrong if they don't if they don't rinse their rice, because that is what makes it so sticky. So again, doing the same thing where I'm running it under water with my hand, just moving the rice around. And you see like the, the water's like white, cloud white. That's like all the starch. Since we're gonna be putting so many ingredients, you wanna take out as much starch as you can. So this is the second rinse. And again, this is the third time. Now for the people curious, yes, I have long nails. Yes, I washed them thoroughly before I did this. And yeah, so before you come with the comments and you can see that the water is getting less cloudy. -er. <laughs> now some people when they're making a rocondole, they tend to put the ingredients first, have it simmer, then put the rice. Me personally, I don't like that idea because I feel like I want my rice to absorb the flavor as much as possible. So I like to put all my ingredients in and then cook it. That's just my preference. I'm just taking out all the water. We don't have to like go crazy trying to take out every single drop, but the majority of it, you wanna take it out. So there's our rice, nice and clean. Now we're going to use our measuring cup. And what we're doing is we're going to put two cups of water back in. Now I use more than two cups, but I like to start with the two cups to see, put all my ingredients in and then put the rest of the water that I prefer. I will show you guys what I mean by that, but this is our two cups, right? So we have the two cups with the rice. Now we're gonna start putting our ingredients in. So we have our green pigeon peas, right? I'm gonna open it up. Some people like to rinse their beans. I do not because I feel like it takes the flavor away. So what I do is when I'm making the arrocondole, I like to take all the water out of this because we already have water in here and we're trying to prevent the rice from getting soggy. So 
I just empty out the water from the beans. You don't have to go completely crazy with trying to empty out every drop. But like I said, you want to just make sure you have the majority of it out. Okay. And I like to use just a big house spoon just because I like to measure my stuff with that. So we have our beans here. With your spoon, you can make sure you take out the remaining water. So you kind of push your spoon to the side to take all the water out while you're putting it in your pot. And like I said, if you're making more rice for your family's bigger, you want to make more rice, you just measure accordingly. So like, let's say if you are using four cups of rice instead of two, of course, you're going to need a bigger pot or bigger rice pot. And you're going to probably need two cans of these beans. So just keep the measurements in mind. I use the whole can. So there it is. There is our beans. I do a little mix with my spoon. Now you see it's starting to get full. Of course, we're going to need more water, but I'll do that after we have all our ingredients in. Okay, so your two packets, you have the Sazon Goya con culantro y achote, and then you have the Sazon Goya con acefran. So both packets, what I do is I just literally do one of these and put them in together. There you go. Mix it in with your spoon. Now I am using the jamón goya, so this. And if you are using cubitos, keep in mind, if you're gonna use cubito, obviously you're going, only gonna use one. I like to, when I use these cubitos, I like to smush it before I put it in. So just don't put it in whole. Smush it with your hand and then drop it in and then mix it with the rice. But instead of cubito, the solid one, I am going to use the packet and the jamón. So same thing, I do this. Put them in there, take my spoon again, and just mix it up. Now with these, I do not measure. So you guys are gonna see exactly how much I use. We're starting with the salt. I like to put about this much. The garlic powder. I like to just put that much. The adobo. I like to put that much. The Goya Sazonador total. Now this, since it has so many ingredients in, you wanna be real careful with the amount. So I will literally say like two dashes of it. So two little salt bays, <laughs> as you will. Now we're working on the sofrito and recaito. So, the reason why I like to use the house spoon because it measures perfectly, it goes into these. So you can just grab your little house spoon, make sure it's a bigger one. So around this size. And I like to grab a full spoon and another full spoon of sofrito. The recaito, I like to only grab one spoon of this. So you're mixing it in, mixing it in, taking my olives. These are the Goya Spanish olives. I love these. Now I'm not putting it in with the liquid. So I want to take probably like four or five olives. You don't have to go crazy just to give it that extra added flavor. And it just gives it a cute little look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off camera, cut the little ham steak pieces so I can put it in the rice. So yeah, I'll be right back. So this is my jamón de cocinal, which is the ham steak. I try to take most of the fat out of it. It's up to you. Some people like to leave the fat on it. I just personally like to cut off the fat. So any of like the white looking pieces is what the fat is. And I cut it off. I cut them in very small pieces, as you guys can see. And we're just gonna put it in here. And I'm just using, oops, I'm just using a quarter piece of the ham steak. Since I'm only using two cups of rice, I'm not gonna go crazy with that. Completely forgot to mention to you guys in the beginning, but I will list it in the beginning once I do the editing. You're gonna need a little bit of tomato sauce, obviously. So the Goya tomato sauce is my preference. This is the only one that I use. You're not gonna use this whole thing. You're literally just gonna use two spoonfuls of this tomato sauce. And what I like to do is, 
since I'm not using this whole thing, of course, I'm not going to throw it out. I like little containers like this. You can find these anywhere, the Dollar Tree store, basically anywhere. Um, so little containers like this, and you just put them in the fridge with your remaining tomato sauce, and you can use it for the days coming whenever you cook. So that's what I like to do. I literally take one spoon, two spoons. You don't need more than that. So yeah, we're mixing this all in. And you guys can see that now it's pretty much full, like with stuff, and it needs more water. You know it needs more water because everything needs to be completely submerged in the water. So nothing above water should be happening. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take half a cup of water, very slowly, start putting it in. So I know I'm not putting too much. There is some pieces that are not submerged. So I'll take a little bit more. So I would say a quarter of the full cup. So just a smidgen, you see? And very slowly putting it in. And now to me, it looks perfect. So yeah, you see now that everything is completely submerged and that's what you want. Now, in terms of the oil, we are grabbing our oil. This is the oil that I use. This is the spoon that I use to cook. I like to use almost a full spoon. You guys can see what it looks like. So that much, mind you, this is only for two cups of rice. So again, measure accordingly. And this is not even in the stove yet. I told you guys, this is what I like to do. I like to put all the ingredients in the rice before I put it to cook because I want all of my ingredients to be savored into this rice. So this rice can taste its best. Okay, now that we have all of our ingredients in the rice, in the pot, what we're going to do, now this depends on what type of stove you have. I have a gas stove. So with my gas stove, I am going to put this on basically medium high. If you don't have a gas stove, then you would probably put it on high, depending on how strong your stove is, but I put it on medium high. I leave it at medium high till all the water is absorbed. Now here's the tricky part. You wanna have most of the water absorbed, but not 100% of it. So I would say 90 to 95. The reasoning for this, again, completely up to you, but my house, I don't like pegao, which is like the burnt rice on the bottom. So if you're a person that doesn't like that burnt rice on the bottom, then this is the perfect way for you to cook because if you wait too long, there's gonna be a lot of burnt rice rice on the bottom and yeah you don't want that <laughs> well at least I don't so I'm going to let this cook a little till it gets 95% of the water absorbed and I will come back and you guys can see how I do it okay so you guys can see there's very minimal water there but there's still some which is good we still had it at the medium high heat so lower it to its lowest and I'm taking my spoon and I'm scraping the bottom because, I, of course, like I told you, I don't like big owls. I don't like the um, burnt rice on the bottom. And mixing it all around. And you guys can see what it looks like so far. That's what it looks like. So you're putting it on low heat now, and you're putting the lid on it. Now, most people would tell you, oh, don't touch it after that till it's done. Me, I still feel like you should still move it around. I would say in like 15 minutes after you have the lid on and after it's been cooking, I still like to move it around again because I don't like the burnt rice on the bottom, but also because I feel like it helps with the separation and helps preventing it from getting soggy or mushy. That's just my preference. So now that I mixed my rice and you guys saw what it looks like, it's on its low setting. I'm going to put the lid on it and I will leave it for about 15 minutes and then I will mix it again. And you guys can see I am making fried chicken with it. It looks crazy, I know it does, because it has the sazon, that's why it has like that orangey look to it. So yeah, I'm just making it with fried chicken. So yeah, I will be back in 15 minutes minutes so you guys can see me moving it around and yeah I'll be right back okay so it has been 15 minutes I'm opening it up and you guys can see let me grab my other mitt you guys can see what it looks like so far amazing obviously it's not completely done yet but I want to mix it just so that way the rice separates and you you can already see it's already separating 
rice looks amazing and it smells so good in here now total cooking time i would say if you have a gas stove i would say about 45 minutes if you don't have a gas stove i would say probably an hour that's just more or less guessing so yeah i'm gonna put this top back on leave it for another 20 minutes or so and then i'll check on it and hopefully it should be done and you guys can see i'm making more chicken and i have some chicken here this is the um chicken that i first had so you guys saw that look a little weird in the frying pan so yeah okay guys so it has been another 20 minutes and this is what it looks like so it's basically done and you guys can see it's not mushy at all nice and fluffy we're gonna put it on a plate so this is the final product guys. This is what it looks like. Super delicious. You can eat it with pretty much anything. And there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye.